All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Durfee High School here in Fall River, Massachusetts. My name is Mayor Jaisal Correa II, and today is a very exciting day. Today is the day that uh, we are talking about building a new Durfee High School and asking the public here in Fall River on March 6th to go out to the polls and vote yes for a new Durfee High School. Uh, this project has been four plus years in the making, uh, and we're excited to talk about really the reasons why Durfee High School needs to be rebuilt from the ground up uh, adjacent to this building in the parking lot next door and then eventually some of this building as well as it begins, begins to come down. Uh, this has been a long, exciting process. It's been one that is challenging for communities throughout the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and the country. When you're talking about old schools that are, uh, you know, a quarter of a billion plus dollars, uh, that's a lot of money, and making sure that we can deliver an excellent product to our taxpayers uh, at, a, at a reasonable cost was really one of the top goals. Uh, in addition to that, you'll hear today about the condition of the high school. You'll actually have an opportunity to see the condition of the high school. So that was another reason why we had to put this wonderful package together. And then finally, and most importantly, uh, it's our duty and responsibility for the next generation of Durfee students and Durfee youth leaders to have a state-of-the-art high school to compete on a global scale uh, in the job market uh, and in the world. And that's really what we're here to do today. And we're joined by so many wonderful partners that came out together uh, to, to make this possible. We have State Representative Alan Sylvia, who's here. Thank you, Representative, for all his support. Uh, this process does not get done without state support. The Massachusetts Building uh, Authority, the MSBA, uh, is, a, it is extremely important in this process. And in 2015, Representative Sylvia up in Boston testified for the need for school funding here locally for this high school. Uh, we also have from the school committee, we have Paul Coogan, as well as uh, school committee member Joe Martin. So thank you for being here. Uh, to incredible supporters of education, lifelong uh, educators and, and supporters of education. We also have uh, some of the very important guests, our students from Durfee High School, and they're on vacation this week, so they, they, made a, they made it a point to be here today. So we have some wonderful students from Durfee High School. We have the staff of Durfee High School here as well, and our superintendent, um, who I'm going to introduce in a second. Uh, we have some people from my office as well, uh, our chief financial officer, Mary Sahadi, our COO of the school department, Ken Pacheco, our, our chief of police and fire here as well, uh, who are not going to be speaking today, but I'll be speaking a little bit later on about the, the safety of the building and how necessary it is to build a brand new state of the art school. Uh, we have uh, from the Vote Yes Committee, uh, Kristen Govin, uh, who's here as well, and, uh, and just a great team that we've put together to make this process possible. We also have a representative here from Senator Roderick's office, and without the Senator's support, uh, a lot of this can, none of this can get done as well. Uh, so thank you so much to all those that are here. So first up, I'm going to bring up the superintendent, superintendent, superintendent Dr. Matthew Malone, to give you a welcome uh, to Durfee High School. So thank you, superintendent. Thanks. So my role here is to welcome everyone. We do welcome you all to the Durfee High School uh, here in Fall River, an amazing, amazing school. And I say amazing school, it's not the walls, it's not the building, it's not the floors, it's not the things that you see around you that are literally crumbling around us. It's amazing students and the faculty and staff that we have that do amazing work every single day to open doors, close achievement gaps, get kids into college, get kids into career, and that's what we do, and we do it very well. We've been doing this building for 40 years. Since this building opened, it's been working against us every single day. We think about the conditions of this building, they're not right for education. My role as the educational advocate for this city is to advocate for our children. And this building is not educationally sound in a way that will provide us a 21st century education. So we worked very hard over the last several years to put together a plan, presented it to the MSBA to support a new building in the city of Fall River. We feel strongly that the time is now. We feel strongly that this building can no longer uh, support the needs of the children in the city. And we also feel strongly that our children are worthy of such an investment in a new building. When we think about what the 21st century means for education, we think about interdisciplinary instruction. We think about flexible grouping of students and adults. We think about how technology is infused throughout the curriculum. We think about hands-on practical application of content and materials and equipment. When we think about those kinds of things, we think about how this building is not set up to provide those ed educational experiences. We also know that education is the key to economic development. 
and we know an investment in a new high school facility will be a pipeline to, to economic prosperity for this region for the next 100 years. This isn't really just about Fall River, although it is. It's really about a, a, an investment in the South Coast. When we think about our graduates and what they will go on to do, these amazing students that you see here right now and their brothers and sisters who are currently in second, third, fourth grade will benefit from this new high school opportunity. We think about why it's so important that the cornerstone of our democracy, a free public education, is essential to all that we believe in in the social compact. I'm very proud to be the superintendent of this system. It's a wonderful school system. We do great work every single day, but this school right now does not support our needs for the future and does not support our needs for the present. Thank you. Okay. I thought you were going to do some backflips at the end or something, but that'll be, that'll be for later. Uh, we also have uh, two other individuals that have joined us that I want to mention. A former school committee woman who has been an extreme advocate of Durfee High School, uh, the new Durfee High School and the Vote Yes campaign, and that's Melissa, P Melissa Panchley. Thank you for being here. And also from the Registry of Deeds, P.J. McDonald, thank you for being here as well. Uh, so moving on to the next uh, individual who's going to come up and give you an overview of the current condition of the school, uh, and then following that, the financial package of the school, which people are very excited to learn about. Uh, so first and foremost, we'll have Chief Operated, Operation, Operating Officer uh, for the Public Schools of Fall River, Ken Pacheco. Come on up. Good morning, everyone. So as the superintendent said, the building is um, less than stellar. It, uh, it needs a lot of help. Um, it's become functionally obsolete uh, with most of our programs. And um, if it wasn't for the staff uh, and, and the job that they do here and the students who are very understanding when there's a bucket of water dripping next to them in the classroom or they're dodging barrels of water in hallways uh, and, and doing the things that they do every day, um, and not missing a beat, um, we'd be in a lot of trouble. Um, but it is time. It is time to uh, make the uh, necessary moves in this building. Uh, a building without opening windows means that your HVAC system has to constantly be working. And that's a chore in this building of 40 years old. Uh, there's an awful lot of other issues. This building was uh, designed with rug in every classroom, um, hallways, and uh, most of that rug is removed for a variety of reasons, um, why we don't put rugs in schools today. Uh, so all of that makes for bad acoustics. So you're in a classroom now, it's very noisy, um, and uh, a lot of other issues kind of like that. Uh, the building was designed as an open classroom, so as, the build, as we decided uh, as educators that the building was no longer suitable in that open classroom um, setting, which was almost immediate, we started putting up walls all over this building, dividing the building up, and um, not really uh, being able to determine how that HVAC was going to work, lighting, and everything else. So um, kind of the first day we walked in, we started making changes to this building that hasn't stopped. But we are at a point now where um, it's very difficult to exist here. And the cost of renovating this building um, is an extremely large sum of money, about $147 million, to bring this building up to standards. Uh, and that kind of uh, is throwing good money after bad. The building itself uh, is, is deteriorating um, every day. And, and uh, with that, remodeling this building is really not a good idea. Um, we, uh, as those of you who want to stick around um, to take a tour with us, we can show you the, the highlights or the low lights of, of this building and, um, and why it needs so much attention and why this process of a new Durfee High School started three years ago and is, um, is moving, um, moving along quite nicely to the point where uh, decisions will be made in the next two weeks as to whether or not we, uh, we walk into a new building soon. Thank you. Okay. So next is a, a really important topic that the public is, is very interested in. It's how do you pay for this? And again, I started today's conversation off saying that, you know, every community is facing, uh, every municipal uh, municipality is facing challenges when you're looking at municipal buildings that cost a quarter of a billion plus dollars to construct. 
Uh, I think that our team, our financial team, both on the city side and the school side, working with the MSBA, working with the architects to ensure that the best possible product was delivered to our taxpayers at the most affordable cost was put in place. That doesn't happen in every other community. That happened here in Fall River because of the people like our next speaker, our CFO, Mary Sahadi, who was actually able to put together a financial package that really made sense for the taxpayers and got as close to that $100 a year mark on average for every household. And that's what we're looking at today. Uh, other communities are looking at $200 plus dollars if they weren't able to build debt capacity that would allow for some of the general fund monies of the City of Fall River annual budget to be placed toward the school, uh, the new Durfee High School. That hasn't happened in all the other communities that's happened in Fall River. And again, that's the credit, uh, our financial team, and I'll have Mary come on up and give you some more details about that and what impact it's going to make on our taxpayers by voting yes on, uh, Janu on, January, on March 6th. So Mary Zahadi, please come up. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first of all, I'd like to echo um, everything the mayor has said, as well as the superintendent and Mr. Ken Pacheco. The building committee started a number of years ago, and they've worked really hard to develop a new high school with a cost that would be affordable to the city of Fall River. Um, the cost has come in at $263 million, of which the eligible cost that the mass school building awarded us last um, February 14th, last Tuesday, was um, 165 million 084. So what that means to us is that we will be reimbursed 62.4 percent of this cost. Um, as the mayor indicated, we have been working really hard with the finance team to develop a plan so that we can absorb some of that cost within our operating budget. So at the moment, we are planning to absorb approximately $40 million worth of the city's share of that cost. So what we will be asking the taxpayers um, to absorb is $58.5 million. What that means to the, an average taxpayer would be approximately $115. That's a residential taxpayer. The remaining amount of money will be a debt service. It will be excluded um, from the tax levy, but it will be added to the individual's tax bills um, for potentially if we went to the long term for 30 years. But as a finance team or as the finance team or member of the finance team, we have developed a plan as new debt um, comes off or, or as debt comes off for those schools that we currently have and we will be paying for, we are looking to absorb that debt within the first eight years of um, the debt service. So we are, we are planning, we are hoping that um, assuming no other cat catastrophes within the school system, no other schools that need to be built, we are hoping that we will be able to absorb the debt within the first eight years of the debt service. So taxpayers will be um, paying the debt for approximately seven years worth of the new high school. Thank you. We'll get to wrap up some of this and answer questions in a little bit because some people may have questions about uh, what we're proposing. Uh, but next, just a few other people that are going to speak today who are very important. Next, uh, from the Durfee Yes Committee and Durfee Rising, which, by the way, if you, uh, uh, if, if you want the details of the plan, the actual architectural renderings, et cetera, you can visit DurfeeRising.com. Uh, those architectural renderings are there, and that's DurfeeRising.com. I can't say enough good things about the committee that's been put together uh, in the private sector because this can't get done without the private sector as well. From the Chamber of Commerce here in Fall River to Bay Coast Bank, I see some members of Bay Coast Bank here. Uh, Nick, Chris Jr., Nick, Nick, uh, Nick's father has been instrumental. We have Bay Coast Bank members here as well. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce and some of the private sector individuals that have really made the public campaign possible, both financially, uh, making sure that people get the pro and con list making sure that people get the information about the Durfee High School project is really, really important. And getting that information uh, into our community has been really an effort uh, it, totally done by the private sector, which we're really happy about and couldn't thank them enough. So representing that group is Kristen Govan, who's going to give a little bit of uh, insight into the need for the school and why you should vote yes on March 6th. Kristen, come on up. Thank you. Um, I am an alum. I'm a taxpayer and a parent who admires what goes on in this school every day. On March 6th, we have a very important decision. This, this opportunity for the city to receive a gift of $165 million so we can build a school that we can all be proud of at a fraction of the cost. We can pay now 
or we can pay later because Durfee needs a solution and no is not a solution. My children deserve this, your children deserve this, our teachers deserve this, and most importantly, Fall River deserves this. Please vote yes on March 6th. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Kristen. And now, to give the student perspective, we have a, a junior here at Durfee High School who's going to uh, talk a little bit about everyday life at Durfee High School, and I don't know what other, other surprises she may have for us, uh, but that's Colby Pexoto, who is going to uh, tell us a little bit about her experience here and why a new Durfee High School is so necessary. Colby. So I am a junior at Durfee High School. I've been here every year, and um, <clears throat> I can just say that thinking back through all of my years here, I can trace different problems that I've had that can be contributed to the structure of this building. I remember my freshman year, towards the end of the year when it was beginning to be really hot outside, the AC broke, and our windows cannot open in this building, so we were all stuck in classrooms that were upwards of 80 degrees trying to learn and trying to take our final test for the end of the year but a lot of us were able to focus and we ended up having to have only half days for about the last month of the year so we suffered immensely in our education in that last month my sophomore year i had a chemistry class that didn't have walls because of the open classroom structure of the building so we had to use file cabinets to build walls between the different classes so the majority of my class time was spent with the teacher walking back and forth between the other classrooms, asking them to be quiet so that we could focus on the work we were doing. And it was extremely distracting, and I know I did not learn much chemistry in that year. Um, this year we had the pipe burst a couple of weeks ago where we were out of school for two days because of the flooding. And I know my main thought was wondering what would have happened if this had happened when we were all in school. And it was a really scary thought coming back here that Friday to think, you know, <coughs> There's always a risk of this happening again, and if it did, it would just be complete chaos for those of us in the school. And at, since that has happened, it's just been a completely different feeling when we walk into the school. We've had to completely close off that part of the building, so our science teachers have had to take other cl teachers' classrooms and use them throughout the day. Most of them have to just use a cart in order to wheel around all their materials because they don't have a classroom to store all of their things. So that takes a toll on a lot of the science education happening, as well as the other teachers that now have to share their classrooms. English and science classes are being forced to cohabitate their classrooms. Walking through the hallways, we have to avoid water buckets constantly because we don't know if there will be a drip and we'll be tripping or slipping on the water on the floor. My health class has giant gaping holes in the ceiling where it's constantly leaking, so we have to structure where we sit around those holes in the ceiling. And I just feel that with a building, we could have so much more Durfee pride and we could have so much more better education happening in this school. And even though I won't be here when the new building is here, I think that the future students definitely deserve that building and that it would help them immensely. Well, well said, really well said. And you know, that's uh, an incredible testament to the students here at Durfee High School. Uh, we wish you luck in your final year, your senior year. Uh, but here's somebody that's coming here to, to petition you, the public, the press, and the public to vote yes. They won't be in the school, right? The people that are behind us, they won't be in the new school. Uh, but they know that the next generation deserves a brand new, beautiful high school, state-of-the-art high school for many, many, many generations to come. And that's what all of us are, are advocating for. Uh, so to wrap up, a couple key, key uh, important things to take away from today uh, is public safety. Um, we have both of our chiefs here today. When you look at the building and you'll get an opportunity to walk through it, you'll notice that there are over 48 doors, entrances and exits to this property, to this building. The building was built at a very different time. Uh, when you have some issues throughout the, the country happening, and um, you know, uh, we, we pray and, uh, and uh, uh, unfortunately we have, to, we have to really think about the public safety of schools in terms of uh, public shootings that you've seen in Parkland and so many others uh, going back you know, to Columbine. That's something that's on our minds when we design a new, new high school. And that's something that's very important. Public safety, very important for our students here at Derby High School and our community. And the new school will be state of the art with public safety, including camera systems, entrance and exits, et cetera. So we're, we're very mindful of the public safety of our students. Uh, and we have both of our chiefs here as well. If you notice, you'll notice this. I found this very interesting. I did not know this. There are no um, sprinkler systems in this building. That's very interesting. Uh, and I, I guess that was the construction at the time that's, that was 
what was okay, um, but that's a problem. <laughs> that's, a, that's a serious issue. Uh, so when you talk about the options that are before the people, just in a public safety perspective, you want to rehab a school, you know, possibly that's currently standing, that's here, that doesn't have any of those systems from the, from the ground up, uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense to redo this particular school. If you're building a brand new school, you can get all those systems in in a, in a way that makes a lot of sense from a construction point of view. And, and I'm, not, I'm not a construction person, but that's, um, that's something that's very important to know uh, when you're building a new high school versus rehabbing the current school. Uh, and then I think the most important piece that the public needs to hear about today is the financial piece. And that's been this administration's goal, to provide a financial package that makes sense. You've got the public safety element, you have the physical structure that's, the, that's just uh, uh, sitting here and, and uh, getting worse and worse each and every day, and then you have the financial piece. And this is a very simple, simple argument that I'll make to tell the people my position of why you should vote yes. We have an opportunity today and on March 6th to vote yes and receive what I consider a coupon from the state a 63% off coupon. If you don't use that coupon, it has an expiration date. You will get no reimbursement. And whether it's this administration or a future administration, the city of Fall River will have to build a new Derby High School or rehab this building to continue accreditation, to ensure that students have a safe environment, and to just ensure that the building is still standing. So if you don't use this opportunity today, it's gonna end up costing the taxpayers of Fall River much, much, much more down the road. And that is why I have been such a big proponent of voting yes for a new Durfee High School and providing the financial package to our taxpayers that makes the most sense. And you heard that today and what we're going to basically do is provide a road map in addition to the getting the, the, the actual bill down to $115 on average. We have a road map to eliminate that bill in just eight years. That's very unique. I don't think there's another community in the Commonwealth that has put forward that kind of plan. Most of these debt services are going long term for 30 years and they're at a higher cost uh, of over $115. I've heard as high as 212 in other communities annually. So we have put together the most optimistic, the best possible financial package for a new Durfee High School. And you got to think about it. This is an incredible opportunity. You can get a new high school, brand new, beautiful facility, state of the art, that doesn't look like this. I don't know if anybody knows the style that this school was built in, but it's called brutalism. That's the architectural style that this school is built in, brutalism. It was a very popular style at the time. Uh, Boston City Hall, Fall River City Hall is built in the same style. Uh, you can get a brand new beautiful high school uh, with 63% reimbursement from the state, and the city will only pick up the difference, and the taxpayers are only asked for $58 million out of a $264 million project. So from a financial standpoint, from an administrative standpoint, it's a no-brainer to vote yes on March 6th. And we, the community, and I know the many taxpayers that are watching this out there, uh, I know they're going to support us and come out to the polls and vote yes on March 6th. So thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you for allowing us to get the message out to the community. And we'll now answer any questions. Jay. Yes, Brian. Some so people like you might want to know why the city can't absorb more than share the, the, the uh, tax that you can get. So the, we're absorbing $40 million of debt capacity. We were, we were able to reserve that debt capacity. That actually started about two years ago um, when I first became mayor. We really looked at this and said, okay, we don't want to put the whole nearly $100 million burden on the taxpayers, which is what most communities do anyway. They just say, look, this is what we have. We can't absorb any in the, in the budget. What we've been able to do is by strategically planning long term on our outlooks of our debt service said we could reserve 40 million today but by uh, what's the year Mary 2030 2022 20 So I'll just say that in the microphone. So what Mary was saying is what we've been able to do is by 2022 is when this, this debt will go long term for the high school. But by 2030, because we've been able to plan ahead, new debt will be retired, and that debt can then be absorbing the old, the, well, the new Durfee debt, so to speak. So this, it, it's just not possible to, to absorb any more than 40. But again, that in itself was a good faith effort by this administration and the partners at the table that made that possible to absorb even the $40 million worth of debt. That's correct. That's correct. So we, we again, we have put together the financial 
package and the roadmap, which we will make public, publicly available, a roadmap that the school committee at that time, the mayor at that time, may still be me, who knows, uh, you know, will have to follow that plan. If you don't follow that plan, and this is, this is true for any community, this is true for communities in Rhode Island, this is true for communities in Massachusetts, if you don't have a good financial plan, then pension systems fall behind, then police and fire gets cut. All these things happen, and we've seen them happen. We've seen them happen in Fall River. We have an excellent financial team today here in Fall River that has been able to strategically plan what, ha what is happening today and long-term into the future. So if that roadmap is followed, it's very simple. By 2030, this bill can be eliminated. It's there, it's been developed, it's public. It's now the responsibility of the taxpayers and the voters and the school committee and city council and the mayor at the time to hold those people accountable. So that is simple, though, that, that there won't be like more debt that will be added? Do you want to answer that question? I'll have Mary answer that question. Certainly. Um, so certainly, we have looked at other infrastructure that we will need, um, improvements to the fire stations, improvements to City Hall. We've factored all of that in. And what we did was we looked at what our operating budget will look like next year, the year after, 10 years out. And we looked at what our increases in state aid would be, using averages, of course, and certainly our tax increases and determined that in approximately 2030, we would be able to absorb the remaining balance of the debt service on this high school. Just so I get the figures right, the overall cost of this project, $254 million? 263. I'm sorry, 263. The state is reimbursing you how much? 165. 165. You are going to raise through tax levy how much? 58500000 million. That excludes. That exclusion. And the 40 million is what? The 40 million will be coming through um, the regular tax operating budget. So, so we're going to the. 40 is uh, 98? 98. Okay. So the cost to the city is 98.5. And, and 98.5, the overall cost of 263, of which 60% is. 60, 62, 6 is going to be the grant from the state. And um, from a debt, um, debt um, exclusion, mm -hmm. uh, where does the city stand? What's the per capita debt in the city? Um, I'm not sure I can get that information for you. I'm not sure of what that amount is at the moment. Not per capita. You have, you have debt out there, right? You have existing debt. We have, we have existing debt out there. We have an operating um, debt budget right now of approximately ten million dollars and, and that's principal rating? that's principal and interest we're using the state's bond rating right now well based on the current operating budget in terms of our estimated local receipts um, our estimated state aid as well as our estimated receipts from tax um, we would not be able to absorb the entire amount without cuts to other areas, the biggest being education and public safety. So in order to continue to fund education at 101% and to continue to fund both the fire and the police departments with their needs, we would not be able to absorb the additional principal and interest in the operating debt and the operating budget until a future year. Ken come up who's, who's the co-chair of the building committee and he can answer this question. Sure, so um, the, the vote on the 6th would start the process with MSBA. We would in turn sign a project funding agreement for the full amount of money. We would petition the city council to approve the borrowing of the full 263 million to cover the cost of the entire school without the reimbursement. So it would be a full borrow of 263 that the council would approve, knowing in writing that MSBA is coming through with 165 million. At that time, I'm sorry, if you want to, okay. So uh, at that point, we would um, petition the uh, the architect and the owner's project manager to start the process of finishing full design. And the hope is, is utilities, uh, underground work would begin um, late fall, early winter uh, on site. 
and uh, in the spring of 19, the foundations would go in and we're expecting to move into the building in September of 2021 and a demolition of this building in 22. It's, it's, going to, it's going to be on Ellsbury Street, the, the Ellsbury Street parking lot, the tennis courts, the baseball field, uh, JV baseball field, and then it'll um, go west, L-shape, along the uh, football field. Not into the Not in, Both of the fields will remain. Fields yes, yes. Those okay. fields were $5 million. Oh, okay. Yes. So, um, and then you're going to tear down the old? Yes, with the exception of the field house. Uh, and the auditorium, which will stay as a standalone building on the opposite side of the campus. You said the clock is ticking on this whole offering the state, the grant money that's coming in. When would that run out if the city wanted to vote yes on this in March? So the vote date um, would start a 120 day period of which we have to come up with funding or let MSBA know that we will not be using their money. Just design, some, really just bad juju here. That's all. Just a, a comedy of, I don't want to say errors, uh, but it was. Uh, a, I think, my personal opinion. I'm not an architect. I think it's a bad design. Um, on the worst part of this property, um, it's built on ledge, so the building uh, slowly increases in size as it goes into the back of the building. You walk into the third floor on the other side of this building. Um, very tough to navigate, long hallways, uh, a lot of dead ends, uh, which doesn't work today. Um, so in, in the new building, it's very symmetrical uh, line of sight for uh, security reasons, for changing of classrooms, uh, for a student. And I'm guessing, I'm, I'm not a graduate of, of uh, Durfee, but to get from the far end of this building to the cafeteria for lunch is a hike. Um, and uh, that won't be the case, you know, with the new building. So it's, it, there was a lot of mistakes made, including, you know, the location of this particular building on the site um, that caused, that's causing us the grief today. People went to jail. Yes, they did. As a result of the construction and the uh, corruption? Of the, way, of the way things were done on this building, yes. I mean, the cut corners and that sort of thing. It's, it's um, poor material. Uh, I don't want to say workmanship. Um, because people, you, you work with what you're given to work with, but uh, 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 definitely some uh, poor design and, uh, and uh, some substandard material. Good. Any other questions? Mayor, why has it taken 40 years to Well, you know, the, the building is standing. It's a big building. When you go through this building and you look at an aerial, it looks like an airport terminal. It looks like you're at Logan or something. It's, it's such an interesting building. Uh, and not interesting good, interesting bad. Um, so what we're, what we're looking to do here is use the, pro the proper process, which is the reimbursement from the MSBA. And I can't stress enough, I mean, this is a critical, critical point. If we don't take advantage of the MSBA money, it's not that you will not have to build a new high school. So all the, the people out there that say vote no, they're really, they're really wrong. They're simply wrong. If you vote no, you will still have to pay upwards of $147 million upwards of 200 plus million dollars, upwards of 300 million, depending on what the options are in the next five years. This building needs to be replaced. And we have an opportunity to not only, to not only improve the, the physical building, but build a brand new state-of-the-art facility on the same property, no disturbance to classrooms, no disturbance to, to kids and learning for a fraction of the cost. That opportunity doesn't come around every single day. That opportunity took a four-year process that is now uh, now finally here. So that's why this vote is so, so critical. And if you, t if you think about your taxes, if you think about your business, if you think about the future of economic development here in the city of Fall River, all answers point back to voting yes on March 6th. And the reason for that is when somebody makes a decision, where do I want to, where do I want to live in the South Coast? And they look at the educational system. We've done a phenomenal job. We have one of the best education systems in the region for an urban environment 
like the city of Fall River or New Bedford or Brockton or whatever it may be. And this will just continue that progress, continue to add to the success of our students going out into the real world. That's what this new Derby High School is about. And it would be a shame to not provide the next generation a state-of-the-art brand new facility when we have the opportunity to reimburse the taxpayers at 63%. And that's why this is so, so critical. We've got the Durfee Yes, we've got Durfee Rising. How much money what is it, are Melissa? These, are these uh, filed with, are they political entities? Are they uh, I, I can't speak to that. I, I don't participate yeah. in that. But if Kristen wants to, these, Kristen, you want to come on up? Please tell us that you're with which committee? Yes, yes. Durfee Yes. <laughs> the new Durfee Ballot Question Committee. Are you spending any money? We are, through private donations. How much is it? Um, the report will be made public on Monday. Perfect. <laughs> you have raised money. We have raised money, yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other last questions? Who wants to go on a tour? Are you that, that <laughs> no. I mean, yes, sure. Uh, I can't speak to the, any of the committees. I know the, the yes committees here. They're here today. They're they're organized clearly. They were invited? Okay. I'm being told that no committee was invited. I don't know if there's any representatives here. Yeah, but again, the, the critical point today is vote yes on March 6th. Thank you. All right, thanks everybody. We've got a tour if you want. next door they were a little bit loud so my teacher would like not try to be rude and go complain so she'd be like it's okay guys you can tolerate it but then sometimes it'd get really loud so she'd have to go complain but she'd be nice about it she'd be like excuse me guys can I have my kids are taking a class next door can you just oh, not even next door next classroom can you please just keep it low so that would have to happen a lot I mean what do you think about the fact that there's like no walls separating the classroom I think that's so crazy but yeah. I don't know it's upstairs also it's like that when i first came here i didn't really have an opinion on it but now it's like taken away from education by being distracted from the other kids who are a little bit louder
can't see it from here, but the auditorium's leaking up top over there, too. Oh, really? I come from the ceiling up on the right side. And if you look at the wall straight ahead of you, you can see the discoloration where there's water that comes down from there occasionally. I don't know if it's that noticeable, but, but I'll show you a spot that has, <coughs> it's terrible. The piano lab. We have to put uh, plastic bags over the pianos uh, on vacation week because of the uh, the leaks. You can see why we have we have barrels here and everything just in case. This has been like this for a long time. I've been here for close to thirty years, and so this room's in use. Okay. Well, that's what, uh, Mr. Bigelow, wasn't there a point last year where you had to move rooms? They were down here. Uh, I'll show you that spot too, if you'd like. And this is not a result of the flood. This is just, sorry. Oh. Is this a result of the flood, or just? No, no, no. And it's it's no, not a pleasant is, smell in here either. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> no, it isn't. No. Yeah. It's, uh, One day I was outside my room, and I'm kind of hard of hearing. And uh, I was standing here with my boss, and she said, do you hear that? And I didn't know what she was telling me, came out here, and then all of a sudden, there was a gush of water that came down here, it looked like Niagara Falls. We had to evacuate the, the rooms, move instruments. Uh, they're all leaking. All, all of these rooms are, have somewhat of a leak. <clears throat> my lab isn't bad. Um, but the rooms down there, we have a tremendous water problem. We also have a tremendous water problem with water coming under the doors, from the bottom of the doors outside. So when it floods on the porch out there, or if it's really driving rain, they we sort of mark off that end of the car and not let anyone go down there because it's, uh, it's too dangerous you know, for the kids to be around. How long have you been here for? 29 years. How long was the roof been leaking? 29 years. <laughs> it's been ever since then. And I actually was here before that. I, I wasn't teaching full time, but I was, I've been here about 34 years. And my brother graduated from here the first year, and there were already, there were already problems. Uh, I can remember teachers, colleagues that I worked with, who said from the moment they came in here, there was, you know, there were already issues. It sounds like it's gone. Way worse. Oh, it's recently. Good. Oh, yeah. how, how long has it been really bad for? That's a hard one. It's been bad for quite a while. Um, but I mean, like, you're talking that, about that bad. Oh, that bad? Yeah. Well, that room in there has been like that for at least 15 years, 20 years. So it's been bad for about 15, 20 years. Yeah. Really bad. Yeah. I mean, this is a this was a recent one, but you know, eventually all of these places are going to have more. It's just the way it is. It's like anything else. You know, once your car starts losing, you start having problems with your car, you know.